That's obviously where Myron, I think, excels. I think Sneeko had been on that show three times in a row, and he saw that like me and Myron were gonna go back and forth a lot. That was one of the things that blew me away, um, or I don't know, maybe you'll, maybe you'll disagree with me on this, I'm not sure, is that it seemed like, and I wasn't even, I wasn't ready for this. I didn't even have this in my brain that this could be a thing. The entire notion of romantic love doesn't exist to these guys at all. I kind of thought that they used like the reproductive strategies as like the foundation for relationships, but like any type of like, I think I brought up with like, oh, like how do you get to know a girl? And like, oh, you know, it's important you meet somebody, see if you have chemistry or whatever. I think every time I brought up the word chemistry, they laughed. Like, what do you mean? Like, you don't know if you love a girl until you f*** her. It's like, wait, what? Like if you've got like a random f***ing OnlyFans girl that's dating Andrew Tate, yeah, she'll deal with him like sleeping around and f***ing around. Ooh, I actually but, disagree. I disagree, I disagree, I disagree. Have you noticed everybody time time like every time people speak about your girl and like what she's doing, they're always like she's probably getting some BBC. Yeah. And I think it's so funny because it really does speak to like the own insecurity that they're projecting onto you. They're imagining themselves in that relationship and mm -hmm. their worst fears, and then they're projecting that worst fear into what's definitely happening to you. Yeah, because that's course. what most fear people fear. Like, and this is not even him thing. This is like I, I've noticed this with mm -hmm. the dudes. I know guys, okay, who will not date a woman. Who's been with a black man? Yeah, I was gonna say the more interesting part because the projection thing obviously happens all the time. Anyway, I'm used to that. The funny part is to see other black dudes play into what are really like pretty negative black racist stereotypes. Um, the first one being that like if a white girl has been <laughs> by a black dude, she's destroyed. You don't ever want to touch her with a ten foot pole because she's like disgusting at that point. Um, right. Yeah, that's the one thing. I had another thing too. I felt really bad. Um, there's a there's a friend that I used to have a long time ago. I don't, we don't talk as much anymore, but he was a black dude and he used to tell me that um, you had to be really careful which white girls you fuck as a black guy because if she's after like a certain type of black dude, if you have like an average dick, you're fucked. And th there's like so much pressure. If you're like an average dick black dude, when you hook up with a girl to have like a massive dick, that it's like a, mm. a really f thing depending on who you're dealing with. I was an interesting thing I never heard before, but. Yeah, uh, I don't have an average <laughs> penis, so I wouldn't know personally. Oh, yeah, of course. But, um, you said you said something that uh what did you say just before that just oh that like that idea that like if a white girl has been with a black dude she's kind of like destroyed a little bit because it's like yeah yeah black okay so ruins white women yeah so the reason why even black guys will uh play into that it's not even about the fact that they're black or not it's it's because black men based off of porn in our culture kind of represent these like bestial uh sex gods who can please a woman based off equipment that nobody else has mm -hmm. and so even for a black dude if it, like listen this is the truth if you are a mediocre black dude uh, in terms of size or average or you know just regular or even if you are large but you have that insecurity about you're not big enough mm -hmm. then being with a black man will still represent the same amount of insecurity as it would for a white man who who has that insecurity you understand what i'm trying to say it's not it's not based off of like the insecurity is not based off of the race of the person who's feeling it. It's really just to do with whether or not they feel good about themselves sexually. And if they don't, black men represent um, the pinnacle of what they feel like they wish they could be yeah. in their heads. Yeah, it's it's almost like in a kind of weird, you saw the movie Get Out, right? Oh uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, it's like in a weird reverse way when they're talking about him at that, um, when they're at that meet and they're all like, wow, you're so athletic. You must be so fat. It's like one of those types of things that like, in some ways, like black people are like the kind of like savage, but they represent like the pinnacle of like sexual, like, uh, you know, like I guess conquest or whatever. It's, it's, it's a very, very, very weird fucking, I understand why it exists in porn, but it's kind of sad to see people play into it so much in real life, especially when they're black. <laughs> it's like, damn dude. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but it just speaks to the fact that the insecurity is there even for black dudes to perform. It's like, if yeah, you're an average dick, it's actually almost somewhat worse. Because if you're if you're a black man, mm -hmm. you're expected sometimes to live up to that, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas I think you as a neutral white dude, like most people, like regular people know, like it's 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 fine, anything goes. But as a black dude, there's some women who will mess with you who are expecting that, mm -hmm. and so you go in with a little bit of that fear and and be like, I can't measure up to the image of what they expect a black man to be in bed, mm -hmm. uh, which is not reasonable. You know, porn is kind of really <laughs> fucked up for for the most of us. So. Yeah. Um, uh, me, whenever I hear people playing into that, it just, it fascinates me how much of a real fear it is. Because I remember I've dated, uh, I dated a girl for about two years, and then she was back on the dating market. And then we were like, we'd still chit-chat every now and then, but we wouldn't see each other. And one time she told me, she's like, yeah, do you know a guy found out that I slept with you? And he could literally not get it hard anymore. Yeah. And I was like, well, why? And he's like, because, and he told me, he's like, once I find out you've been with a black man, I can't look at you the same. Mm-hmm. 
And I was so blown away by that. I didn't know how deep it was, but it really is that deep for some people. Because I, 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 I dealt with parents who found out I was black and, and had an issue with it. And, you mm -hmm. know, that's not uncommon. Sure. But I, I didn't know there was males out there who were that deeply. And these aren't like KKK members who are like, nothing like that. Regular mm -hmm. dudes. Yeah, I was going to say, the parent thing is at least, that's almost better. Because it's like, okay, I get yeah. it. You're kind of racist. That's chill. Yeah. You know, it is, I'm sure as a black dude, especially if you're with a white girl, you're used to, you, you know every time you run into a white girl's parents, it might be that. But to know that there is like actually like that ultra deep-seated like, disgust that some people will have with a woman that's another black dude that's almost worse it's like holy shit this is like like this is getting you angry down to your bone it's like insane yeah sorry Jeez. Uh, apparently your chat's telling me my mic's peaking is it better oh yeah i turned you down a little bit i can turn you back up nice job okay uh, you want to turn me you want to turn me up no nope, you're good now yeah you're fine okay cool 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 my apologies i don't have a good limiter on this so bad um but yeah as far as like um the way that they're talking about you now you know it, it is fascinating to me because um, like a lot of people when they find out you're going on like ah but what did you tell them i'm like i didn't tell him anything i said he should go on and experience it for himself i, I didn't i didn't want to bias you anymore. but for you coming back from it did you feel like it was overall a net positive for you going on the podcast yeah for sure i myron and i don't know what fresh's name is do you know what fresh's name is uh walter walter, walter weeks okay never mind i'm gonna call him fresh <laughs> myron and fresh um were both super polite and super chill um, yes. The Myron guy was really cool. Um, I say that cautiously because I don't know if a video's gonna come out with him talking shit. <laughs> but um, he, I, regardless of what I think about like their views and everything, that Myron dude is like super dedicated to everything on that podcast. Like, um, mm. I think I mentioned yesterday on stream, like this guy, I asked him afterwards because we all went out to eat. And I was like, do you have like a background in like audio video shit? And he's like, no, I, you know, I worked for the DHS, like did like, you know, busted like trafficking rings and shit. But like when we were, I, cause I remember sitting there watching as he was like going around, he was like checking every single camera. He was asking for like, I need a prime lens for this. I need a zoom lens for this. Like we need to move that for that. We need to get the chairs out of the background. We need to make sure they don't have a hat on cause it's gonna block those people. But like he was going to, he like, he seemed very, very, very dedicated to walking around and getting everything. So I have a lot of respect for him in terms of setting his shit up. And to be fair, they've done really well for themselves. That podcast. I don't even think it's two years old. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, even if I disagree. Also, he was really respectful the entire time. Um, yeah. Yeah. And Fresh was, too, to be fair, on the show. It's not like Fresh was, like, talking a ton of shit or anything on the show. Well, a little bit, but not not much. But, yeah, I, I, we disagree, obviously, on a lot of relationship-related stuff. But I, I respect him as a person, as a, as a man. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. I think um, I think as far as the professionalism goes in regards to, like, uh, the setup, like, I was really impressed as well. I remember when going I went on the set. Like they took a lot of time to make sure all the audio visual, which is good. I, mm -hmm. I think one thing I always have an issue with whenever I'm working with people is is coming up and feeling everything is absolutely disorganized and nobody really cares. Yeah. And seeing people who care and put that much time, I think it, it goes a long way towards making the end product good. Yeah. For How sure. did you feel about uh, the cast members? Um, fresh fit, fresh and fit, and Chris are like the girls. <laughs> okay. Well, you can go with the dudes, and then you can go with the ladies afterwards. Um, I don't. I'm. I don't. I feel like for, whew, okay, let me try to phrase this in the friendliest way possible. For like the high IQ, super like off the wall shit, um, I think that's obviously where Myron, I think, excels. That seems to be like what he enjoys doing. So that back and forth with him is cool. Fresh seems like a friendly dude. It doesn't seem like that's as much his wheelhouse. Like he's not mm. there to have like the high powered fucking debating on that shit. Um, so yeah, so the fit guy was really cool. Fresh guy seemed okay. Um, I thought Sneeko, Sneeko I think is a, I have a lot of respect for that dude. Um, I think he's a little misguided, but like I think he's pretty socially aware. A lot of my uh, subreddit was like laughing at him and saying, and I think even in the Fresh and Fit subreddit, like, oh, Sneeko shut the, f the whole time because he was intimidated. But I think Sneeko had been on that show three times in a row and he saw that like me and Myron were gonna go back and forth a lot. So he just like chilled. I think it's really difficult for a guy, especially like him, to be able to just like chill for a moment and not constantly have to be the center of attention. So I think I think he was doing that intentionally. I had a lot of respect for that. Um, hmm. And then, yeah, the girls were, holy yikes, dude. Jesus Christ. That was a, yeah. A sneak is also a young man. I think he is, too. He's 24. 24, yeah. 24, and you mm -hmm. trying to talk to grown women and they can smell that you're young. They just don't care what you mm -hmm. talk, to be honest. That's one thing. That's one thing that's very real. It's like, as a young man, you try to talk to older women and they look at you like, bro, you ain't, you're 23. Like, what are you even talking about? Don't well, want to get into this. Yeah, maybe for some older men. I don't know about for the Miami people. I think it just comes down to your, <laughs> whether you're verified on Instagram or whatever. I think it's a little different. Or, but, or you got money. Or you yeah, got money. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. But no, yeah, so in general, I get it. Yeah. So what happened with the ladies? What was that like? Just very much like 
there was like a certain type of, I mentioned this before, before I ever went on Fresh and Fit, I was telling chat like, cause I came from LA and I'm thinking like, these are probably gonna be like some of the most shallow, empty fucking people in the world is fucking LA girls and shit. Um, and then as soon as I got to Miami, I was like, oh my God, especially cause I go down to South Beach a lot, um, yikes. And then being on that Fresh and Fit podcast, those girls were like, this is what, I can finally show my chat. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about Miami girls. <laughs> yeah. Holy yeah, people don't fuck. have any idea. They don't yeah, have any it's idea. not like it's it, they blow LA girls out of the water in terms of like holy yikes, holy. Well, fuck. you know what the thing with LA girls is like a lot of them come there for an actual career. They want to act. They want to do so. They have to have mm -hmm. some fucking measure of self awareness yeah. to be able to make it right. Whereas, Whereas Miami girls women, come here to live on yachts. Like, they want to be boat girl. Yeah. It's, it's a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They're really different. And so when I say that and I'm like, uh, like there's a bit of a selection bias in regards to the kind of cast members you'll have. Mm -hmm. And people are like, I remember I was talking to Sneaker. He's like, well, that's what women are like. And I'm like, what? The women on like Fresh and Fit? Like, yeah. I'm like, there's no way you believe that. Yeah, that, no, no, they totally do. Dated, they totally do. There's no way you've dated anywhere outside of Miami and really feel like women are all like that. Because mm -hmm. like, it's not. The, the, it is a very unique experience. Me having lived in the States in different parts, like, my experience dating in the States was not these kind of women. Yeah. So when I went on the podcast myself, I'm like, who are these brain dead, brain rot broads that I have to speak about that feel like they're so certain about shit? So mm -hmm. I don't know. To me, I, I don't feel like the cast member is an indicative reflection of, of, of everyday women. It, not just, of everyday women. Not even of everyday all over Miami women, but it's like there's like a certain type of like downtown Brickell area um, and then like South Beach Miami women. But like Miami's a big city. You can go out more. You can find a ton of different people. Or you go to any of the schools around here and find a different type of people. But in terms of like the the like archetypical like Miami girl, like the boat girl that wants to just like find a dude with a boat and like sit on it all day. Like, yeah, holy shit. They, these were definitely. I, also be honest, like if I was a self-respecting woman, I don't think I'd go on a podcast that I've done a single bounce of research on and be like, oh yeah, let me do this. But what I actually learned, and this I learned later on, mm -hmm. the way that they actually get their women, do you know? Uh, no, I don't. Other than that one dude, I think Chris does it on Instagram or something. I don't know how. So sometimes they do it through Instagram. They actually also have like photographers and stuff who will like approach women, like sometimes you're on the street. Okay. And then they'll be like, if they see the ones cute, they're like, hey, we do this podcast. We'd love to have you on. Da, da, da. So they're just picking people who sometimes don't even know about the podcast in general. Sure. And so a lot of people kind of coming in blind. They're just hearing about this opportunity to get mm -hmm. on. So um, the whole uh, concept, I think. I don't think there's anything wrong with that per se either. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with the format that they're doing it. But I just think that when sometimes people speak about like, oh, well, see, this is what all women, women are like. like. Yeah, that's really annoying. Yeah, but you have to imagine it's like, okay, well, the first off, the kind of women who come on this podcast and want to spend their day with random dudes to talk about dating are probably people who are after clout. You get what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. So they're already getting a selection bias in regards to their kind of mindset and their behavior because I don't, I don't believe that everyone's about that kind of lifestyle. So mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know for me, I find the disc when I went there, I I remember thinking, you motherfuckers are like from another planet yeah. in some ways. Oh Cause, yeah, because like the stuff that you guys are saying don't make much sense to me. Um, but it is unfortunate that that kind of permeates into like the entirety of the culture. And everyone's like, well, this is what women are like. They're just whores who want mm -hmm. who want to be on Instagram. So that was one of the things that blew me away. Um, or I don't know, maybe you'll, maybe you'll disagree with me on this. I'm not sure. Is that it seemed like, and I wasn't even, I wasn't ready for this. I didn't even have this in my brain that this could be a thing. The entire right. notion of romantic love doesn't exist to these guys at all. I kind of thought that they used like the reproductive strategies as like the foundation for relationships, but like any type of like, I think I brought up with like, oh, like how do you get to know a girl? I'm like, oh, you know, it's important you meet somebody, see if you have chemistry or whatever. I think every time I brought up the word chemistry, they laughed. Like, what do you mean? Like, you don't know if you love a girl until you f her. It's like, wait, what? That's like not even remotely true. Um, but the, yeah, holy shit. I didn't even know how to like engage on that point because it was such an alien concept to me. Um, yeah. Well, it's difficult. And the reason why it's difficult is twofold. One, uh, these guys haven't I know Sneeko has a little bit but even him I think his relationship turned open or he started cheating halfway through so mm -hmm. you know they haven't been in any long term relationships and I say this really importantly because I think it's very difficult on the outside to really understand the value of one mm -hmm. until you've gone through yeah. some like serious trials and tribulations and shared that with somebody mm -hmm. else so that was I'm a big that was a huge stuff, thing for when I was thinking just real quick because like I'm thinking like their audience is probably a lot of guys that haven't been in relationships before so I feel right. kind of lame being like oh no well it's like really nice having someone like there for you and I'm like Sneeko would say you're like, oh, what does that mean? You just want a girl to like watch Netflix with? And I was like, bro, is that all you do in your relationships? Like, what do you, yeah, sorry, God. 
Right, right. I think it's very difficult to understand the whole idea of being comforted after going through something really difficult or having somebody you can confide in that, that like, uh, that when you're going through something difficult, you can trust with that kind of stuff. They don't really understand it. Or even just going through the highs of life mm -hmm. and, you know, like advancing in your career and having somebody you get to share that with at the end of the yeah. day. It, these are little things that sound like nothing, but as you go through these things and you build a history with somebody, it deepens a bond beyond something that's like really tangibly explainable easily to someone who hasn't experienced mm -hmm. it. Because their entire like dopamine rush from these kinds of dating experiences is essentially fucking. Yeah, that's what it really comes down to, and that's why they only talk about it in those terms. Be attractive, oh, so I can fuck you. Right. And I was gonna say not even good fucking too. I think we kind of disagreed on this in the past, but I saw it come up in the show again. That it was really funny. One of the guys, no, I think one of the girls <laughs> asked the question where she's like, "What's the difference between good pussy and bad pussy? Like, what's the difference between like a good lay and a bad lay?" And none of the guys had a single answer either. And I was like, "What the fuck? I thought this is all you guys do is like fuck or whatever." Uh, but I guess it just kind of goes to that point of like at the end of the day, it's just about like getting the bag, where the bag is literally just having sex and like nothing else matters beyond that. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one thing that was funny that they were talking about, I remember we had this discussion about, this is actually what started the whole like, uh, beef, I suppose, quote unquote, between the, the two groups is um, we had a discussion about sex work. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why they were against sex work is because like they felt it was transactional and what they wanted was like genuine burning desire or some other bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought it was interesting. I, like, I didn't disagree that it's always enjoyable when you're sleeping with somebody who really desires you, but I disagree with them because I think like sex work has its place. Right. Agree to disagree, whatever. Uh, but then I came to find out, like, um, you know, half the women who come on the pod, some of them get ran through. Uh, some of them are just like doing it for clout and stuff like that. Like, you know, there's no real chemistry building between the two. It's just, oh, you could do something for me and I could do something for you. And so like the transaction of money was unacceptable to gain sex from. Like you can't pay for sex with direct cash, but if you pay with it with clout, then it's no longer transactional. I didn't understand that whole concept. Mm -hmm. But in hearing them speak about it, it made me realize like, their idea of good sex really just revolves around the fact that the woman uh, that the woman is like willing to do anything do you understand what i'm trying to say it's not about how you're being touched it's not about um uh any sense of physical intimacy body exploration or whatever kind of trying stuff it really just revolves like oh she let me bust on her face oh sure oh, yeah, she, yeah you know what i'm saying that's like the idea it's all, it's, oh, it's let, weird because it's like an adversarial thing too where like the woman and i almost like i almost i try not to i don't think i actually do use these words but like it bothers me when people use the terms like oh did she give it up or like oh was he able to get like it almost sounds like a like you're in a battling position as a woman where you're like being hunted and the guys are trying to like get something out of you and if he did he wins and like yeah, i don't know it just feels like so fucking toxic ugh yeah so the way that they describe it is not the way i enjoy sex nor is that the way that i'd want to so i think a lot of the stuff that they speak on um broadly about dating like you said a lot of it does make sense um but when it comes to the more finer details or some of the more holistic things like whether it be why you should be in a relationship what are some of the deeper things that are a little bit harder to explain i don't think they have the lived experiences to really talk about that it's easy to talk about dating fucking girls if that's all you've done but in terms of actually developing a stronger bond and going deeper than that it's hard to describe or to understand its value if you've never gone through it mm -hmm. so be it sneeko be it uh the two guys fresh and fit like they haven't experienced that and so of course they're not going to value it when they're talking about it on the podcast that's why yeah. it sounds transactional but in the, and they'll say it too it's like relationships and sex are transactional mm -hmm. and so um i'm not surprised that they have such a different mindset that that's what i would expect yeah for sure yeah and i for sneeko i was okay with sneeko feeling that way because again he's 24 like what well, i mean like well, I'm, not, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna sit here and get seriously mad at a dude that thinks he's got women figured out at 24 because we all were dumb as fuck at 24 but i figure right. for like the fresh and fit dudes these guys are like in their 30s like should know a little bit better or a little differently but yeah I think you underestimate how few people have been in relationships, even going into their 30s. No, yeah, it's totally nowadays, possible, yeah. No. I think, no, I think in this day and age, people approaching their late 20s, like it's super common to them mm -hmm. to have not been in any relationship, man or woman. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to like young people sometimes. I'll talk about people in their 24, 25, and they'll tell me I've never had a boyfriend, ever. Sure because most folks are just not doing it like yeah some people are actually getting laid here and there but like in terms of actual committed relationship where things are clearly defined it's it's no longer as common as you'd believe like when you and i were growing up mm -hmm. that really shocked me actually that was like one of the biggest talking things because i would do these call-in shows and women would call in it's like I, I don't know how to get a boyfriend i'm like how old are you she's like 27 i was yeah. like what the fuck is this and it's very normal to not be relationships because now they're doing the whole like i don't like labels and uh 
we're just gonna float in this and like mm -hmm. feel it out i think the internet's, so, yeah. internet's fucking us up dude i think well yeah that, that that's a whole whole thing i think you brought that up on the podcast at one point somebody sent me a clip i think you mentioned mm -hmm. the fact that uh it's not that um women or men are necessarily different it's like the internet's kind of just changed everything is yeah. that a good it's, i think the said? internet has like changed a lot of stuff with our social interactions um mm. yeah and keeping people at home and everything uh way yeah. too much it's not i don't think it's good for our brains yeah oh yeah and just before i jumped on the stream i think you said something about like uh you feel like uh men the whole idea that men don't talk shit about uh their friends behind their backs yeah i mean i de maybe it's because the industry i'm in but i definitely see it happen <laughs> yeah yeah what do you mean what do you see happen that like people will like kind of be fake friends with people but then like behind the scenes like oh yeah like this dude's an asshole like fuck this guy like he's a cloud shark blah 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 like you'll hear people talking shit behind the scenes but but yeah. i imagine in entertainment that all the interactions are going to be a bit weird compared to normal human interactions do you, are you on guard when people try to befriend uh no because i don't ever really get that close to people so like if people talk shit it's like whatever i kind of like <laughs> it sounds kind of weird but i just kind of expect that like every chat log will get leaked or everybody will start talking shit or like doing whatever snake shit eventually this is kind of how i see it oh my god i don't know why but i have mr girl's voice running through my i feel like he says uh, destiny are you afraid of falling in love or something like that? Yeah. What, is it? what do you say what do you say uh, something probably something like that he said destiny you're afraid of being vulnerable with people being something harsh. like yeah something like that <laughs> not gonna lie that shit sounds like it makes sense right now i don't even like the motherfucker <laughs> not gonna lie he's like he was preaching a little bit you don't feel like that's fucking you up a little bit um so the way that i would check for this is are there things that i would share with about myself to people or are there relationships or friendships that i would explore um but i don't because i'm so scared of like a potential blowback and that's never really happened i don't have like problems like making new friends chatting with people like hooking people up with stuff like um yeah i don't think i'm like being super avoidant when it comes to making new friends and as long as i'm not then i feel like there's probably not a problem there but, but, got but, to but, a point, you, but, yeah, but you are you you are in a way because um you know in that same token that you talk to friends and be like these guys don't understand the deepening of a bond you're also robbing yourself of having the opportunity with your uh quote-unquote potential friends because of the fact that you're, you're like the dms might get leaked or some shit it is affecting you indirectly you're kind of well, doing the, what they're doing with their relationships. Yeah, but the question would be like, is there something that I would share that I wouldn't share otherwise? Like there are very, the thing is, the, the thing that kind of makes it all a little bit more complicated is like, I'm a very, very, very public person about almost everything. So there's not much that like, I'm trusting somebody with that nobody knows about, right? Those are like, there's like three things maybe in my life that like most people don't already know about. So it's not like there's, um, so there's just not much for me to be vulnerable with. Right. If I was like a man with many secrets or if there was like a lot of stuff like that going on, maybe it'd be a little bit different. But for the most part, most people know everything about me anyway. So there's not really much you can hurt me with. Right. Uh, well, couldn't the same thing be said for you and your relationship? Like there's no reason for you to even be in a relationship because you've already kind of shared everything with everyone. Um, well, no, because I don't live the same lifestyle with everyone. I don't live with everybody or travel with everybody or do things with everybody. That's like. Right. So for you. So, mm -hmm. so for you, the benefit of your relationship isn't share things that you don't share with others. Basically about like, being able to do shit, I guess. Kind of, yeah. Or like, even if somebody does backstab me, like at the very least, like, like I had fun with all the time I spent with like Vosh and Hassan. Like, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't like worried the whole time, like, oh god, these guys are gonna backstab me. But even though it was possible or even likely, um, like I still had fun. Like every stream I did with Hassan was super fun. Every argument I had with Vosh was like super fun. So even if at the end of the day all of that shit kind of self destructed, it was still fun while I was there. I don't have any regrets or anything. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. if you live such an open life that everybody's kind of like your quote unquote yeah. friend in a weird way. But if there was like, if I was like avoiding talks with people or if like Abba was like, he wants to come on, it's like, oof, this guy might shit talk me. I don't know. I don't think I can do it. Like if that, if those thoughts started cropping up or whatever, then I would definitely be worried. But um, I'm not like avoiding interactions because I'm worried about potential fallback. Or, uh, yeah, this is such a there. left field answer. It's so bizarre. Like, yeah, sure. I don't think you recognize how fucking crazy that is. No, yeah, I understand, man. But I'm also like I, really, really open. I have, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I, see, I have an no, open I relationship. Like I talk about all sorts of crazy shit online. Like, yeah. It's pretty everything's pretty weird yeah. the reason why i don't have these kind of deep rooted friendships is because i share everything with everyone so yeah, yeah basically yeah <laughs> so like i feel like a shrink would have a field day with that answer be like i don't I, this this wasn't in my practice yeah. <laughs> that is different i, I don't have a, a rebuttal to that so i mm -hmm. think you win today Thanks, man. all right well listen i think that's pretty much covers most of it um gotcha oh wait do you know they have nicknames for you two do you know what they are what on the who's they on um fresh and fit oh i'm sure they got me it's well, sorry it? damn that sounded way more insidious they call you apple and peach or is that insidious is that bad 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard, I seen that one in my comment section. Mm -hmm. Man. You got Apple and Peach, there's L3, L3, Lasan. Yeah, maybe, it might be, maybe it's a homophobic thing. Hey, man, listen, know. I like yeah. apples, I like peaches, I'm, I'm straight, I'm, I'm good with that. Yo, <laughs> okay. yo, listen, that fan base is hilarious. <laughs> that fan yeah, base they're, they're definitely wild. <laughs> yo, they, they, uh, listen, people link me stuff all the time, and the amount of times that these guys shit on Chris, and the amount of time that they spend in that subreddit shitting on Fresh is crazy. Yeah, like, I that, feel kind of bad, yeah. 90% of that subreddit is being like, can you please get rid of Fresh? Can you yeah, I was reading through the comments, but like, yeah, it's rough. I, it would be really hard. And again, I disagree with a lot of research, but I think it'd be really hard to do anything next to the fit guy because that dude is driven. Like if you want to, it feels like if you want to work on a project with him, you've got to be like on your shit because that dude is like crazy. Like I remember that that show we were supposed to do yesterday. Um, I think they mentioned Fresh was late, so I'm not like really thing. But like fit, I think the show was supposed to start at like, it was like 6 30 or something mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. fit came into that studio from the gym at like 6 28 and he like he comes in he's like let's go set everything up and i was like oh my god this guy is like fucking he's there <laughs> like he's in the zone constantly so yeah that was it's interesting seeing it would be pretty intimidating i think working next to somebody like that yeah i mean yeah i think if you're not used to it i think um mm -hmm. if, if you've worked in some forms of law enforcement or even the military that kind of attitude's pretty normal mm -hmm. yeah just because you know yeah it was super like believable that. seeing him and be like yeah you sort of like federal agent or whatever like yeah of course you did like you didn't have to say anything dude you're like yeah 100 um, yeah yeah they'd always tell us to move with a sense of urgency mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> move with purpose sense of urgency and so you just kind of learn to just be on top and make everything automatic so that kind of attitude i think is great i think it's great in, in mm -hmm. a artistic uh setting yeah because my experience working with artists is that everything is just chaos and like uh, it comes when it comes but it's having a little bit of that right regiment now. will take you so fucking yeah, for uh, sure. and so that's like the drastic difference um but you know um it is one of the interesting things when seeing people take advice from folks online is interesting because if people don't see it, they don't believe it. Meaning um, that's why the whole fake it till you make it, the whole Bugattis and the ladies on Instagram make such a big difference is that for most folks, they'll look at you this and mm -hmm. they'll say, you don't get laid. It's impossible. Sure. Right? Like you're, you're, you're five, four, uh, oh yeah, fuck! I thought about strategizing for like, because I'm talking to these people, but it feels cringe to like play their game because it's like, do, do I need to start like taking pictures of like every girl I hook up with and start posting them on Facebook and, or like Instagram and shit? Because otherwise, it seems like I'm just like a virgin nerd or whatever. Because, but it's weird wow. when somebody's like, you don't get laid, and it's like, well, I do get laid. like, I don't want to get into an argument like that. You know, it feels so strange, but it almost feels like you need the street credit. Otherwise, people are just gonna assume that you're like a zesty virgin. I guess, yeah. Right. Exactly. So. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll speak about stuff. They're like, Ab, I ain't seen you with no women. And I'm like, yeah, because I'm a private dude. What you think? Mm -hmm. What I look like getting with a girl and be like, let's take a selfie or a picture so yeah. I can show everybody I was with you. Like, <laughs> what kind of fucking loser do I look like to try to do some weird Yeah, that's what, and that's what it feels like to me. It's cringe, yeah. Yeah, yeah I look, I, I, first off, I'm very respectful of the people I've been with. And so mm -hmm. as a result, I like to value their privacy, their respectful mind. That's why I never fuck with no clout chasers or that's why no women have posted me online be like, you know who I thought that they don't do that because the people I trying to initially go for, mm -hmm. I've kind of vetted so they're not weirdos like that. Sure. And so at the same time, I'm already not a motherfucker who takes like take pictures, pictures out in public. I'm not gonna be with a girl and start acting brand new just so I can prove to random guys online. Yeah, that I, yeah, that I that's always. Me. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Yeah, because it's like, like I don't need a fucking picture of you, bitch. Like I'm fucking visiting you. I'm hanging out with you. Like this is chill. Like I don't need to post pictures of Instagram. Like look at who I just had my dick inside. Like it feels so fucking cringe, you know? It, uh. it is cringe. It's absolutely cringe, and so that's why I can never see myself engaging in behavior. Mm -hmm. Um, and so whenever I see people like taking pride in that or like engaging that, I always think like, first off, you have to imagine. If you were fucking with a girl, but you no longer with her, but you still post her online, she must look at you funny. She was like, like, why is this guy still got my pictures online, like bragging about the fact <laughs> Maybe, that he's with yeah. me, you know? And then also, it doesn't work in your favor, generally, okay? To have a bunch of pictures with women and Bugattis and all that stuff, and then think you're going to attract ladies who are not after you for those yeah, maybe. You know what yeah. I'm trying to say? Well, I mean, I'm lucky because I'm already married, so I don't have to worry about like finding like the one or whatever. So I, maybe I am just looking for more Bugatti bitches. Fuck it. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but, yeah. but, 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 but you could imagine you posted a Bugatti, you posted. Mm -hmm. 
IG models. The only people who are going to find that appealing are people who live that kind no, of. No, you're that's that is Regu right. I don't hook up with like Miami women. girls. I wouldn't like to. It wouldn't be fun for me. Yeah, like the type e exactly. of women. Yeah, you're right. One hundred percent, of course. So the the quote unquote spiritual women that they talk about or whatever mm -hmm. the fuck is, they're going to see that shit. They're going to be turned off. So he's mm -hmm. like, first off, his life looks messy, and he's always out here in public, like showcase everything. I'm a chill private person. I don't want my family and everybody seeing the fact that you know what I mean. Like they don't mm -hmm. want that kind of. I wouldn't want that kind of message. Yeah. I mean, I dated a girl who had a crazy Instagram, like kind of doing thirst traps, and I, I grew out of that real quick. And I'm like, I don't want to be. Sure. So Oof. there's all, you're wor you're working ten steps back because mm -hmm. you're not falling in line with that paradigm. Yeah. One thing that is really weird to me. Um, it's very frustrating when I debate people and I find out that we're living in like, I don't even know if we're reading the same words sometimes when we're reading an article together. It's like they take something totally different. Something that I've always wondered, and I think I kind of saw it um, on that show, is like, I'm not trying to talk shit, and I understand everybody has different like beauty standards or whatever, but like, oh my God, dude, like that ultra plastic, ultra makeup, <laughs> ultra, it's not even like a thing where I'm like, oh no, like I wouldn't do it. Like it's, it's actually gross to me. Like it's hard for me to even hold eye contact with some of the people that are like, it's done up so hard where I'm like, I feel like this is some simulacra shit. I don't even know if you're a human being right now. It is unbelievable. And, but, but, but I'm seeing for the first time being in that environment now, it feels like there actually are a lot of guys who are, um, who are like super into that kind of stuff. Um, oh, for sure, for sure. And you that, it like it. blows my, cause I feel like I can look at a girl and another guy be like, oh dude, she's like a nine or 10. I'd be like, this girl is legit like a three. She looks okay. like a, Beast. You ready for like, this? You're, yeah, go. You ready? You ready for this? Uh huh. You, uh, did you see the super chats? Yeah, I, well, I read funnest, every single one of them. Yeah. One of my favorite aspects about the whole thing is the super chats come in, and they be saying the most foul shit. Yo, can you tell Honey Third from the left that her face looks like a horse? Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. They'll be saying crazy. Yo, 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 saw, Myron, yeah. you got a bunch of fours and fives. Get some hotter bitches on the pod, mm -hmm. and he reads that shit out loud, right? Yeah, he does. Yeah. Well, they have to if it's over a certain dollar amount, right? They say they'll do it. So oh, they, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 50, and, 50 and above, there's people who donate every day to be able to talk shit to these women. Mm -hmm. Here's what's crazy, okay? Vast majority of these women go on the pod and their IG numbers go up exponentially. Yeah. Like they, they, they gain way more followers, meaning dudes are out here shit talking these women, looking at them, saying they're disgusting or whatever it might be. Then these dudes are going after them and then going into their DMs mm -hmm. and paying for their services. A lot of women will say like, yeah, after I went on, like my OnlyFans got more popular. Whatever. Yeah. So you have to oh. imagine a podcast mm -hmm. dedicated to talking shit about these ladies mm -hmm. is also one of the best promotional tools for these women to grow their brand. Yeah, this is something I brought up and I don't think they agreed with me on this. I think it was madcap um but they were they were talking about how, like if you're a woman and you're with a guy that's way 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 higher value you're gonna let that guy sleep around because you know it's okay and i thought on the flip side i was like listen i'm pretty sure people in your audience would do the same if there was some fucking random virgin in your audience and he had the chance to like date some fucking 10 out of 10 ig model or some OnlyFans girl he would probably also be like okay fuck it. like if you want to the dudes that's fine as long as i get to fuck you too 99 sure for the virgin audience there are there are a ton of them that would say yes to that they might be in the comment section say like no no, I can't do it. But given the opportunity to do that or be a virgin, I think they'd jump on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think they'd be resistant to it, but I don't disagree. Yeah, they'd be resistant yeah. to it. But in the same way that if you're being honest with yourself, and I, I, I'm, I'm not even going to come close to agreeing on this one, no yeah. woman is going to be okay with her man running out and fucking younger, different girls every day. No fucking shot. On a one-sided open relationship, I don't believe that ever. There might be oh, some that oh, might oh, oh, tolerate wait, wait, wait. it, but... but what do you mean they wouldn't be okay with like their man going out fucking like you feel like there's no like the the the, the high value man uh he gets to fuck around she doesn't you don't feel like there's women who are down with that shit i think there are some that might tolerate it because the guy is like a lot of value but i don't think there's any that would prefer it prefer it mm, maybe unless you're literally like in, into like cuck queening or whatever no but here's the thing so. here's the thing they mm -hmm. don't need their women for it. i don't think they give a shit about that they just need their to get in line yeah, but I'm saying I don't think the women are okay with it. They're okay with it based off the circumstances, which is he financially provides. Yeah, them. that's what I mean. Unless the guy is like outranking the woman. Like if you have like two people that are on like decently even footing, it's like a decently yeah. popular successful woman and a decently popular successful guy or whatever. There's no way that a woman, like if you've got like a random OnlyFans girl that's dating Andrew Tate, yeah, she'll deal with him like sleeping around and fucking around. Ooh, I actually but, disagree. I disagree, I disagree, I disagree. And I'll tell you why I disagree. Yeah, why do you think um, so? 
so hyper successful women, hyper successful men who end up in the relationship actually generally have some kind of openness involved on, on, on at least the men's side. I've seen open, uh, openness involved, yeah, but not one-sided. I've never heard I'll that tell before. You, I, uh -huh. I'll tell you why it's often one-sided. There's a lot of women who, you know, whether they like it or not, just don't like the idea of being with multiple people. They just don't enjoy it, okay? And generally, I find that's to be more true for women than it is for men. You can agree, disagree. This is complete anecdotal, so I'm just saying that. Mm -hmm. But generally, they're much more apt to want to be like monogamous or like single minded in that sense versus men, I think, are much more likely to be open and want to fuck around. Okay? Sure, that's true. But, but there's so, no I, for, I don't know how we could ever prove it. Like there's no shot that you're like dating a woman and she's like, yeah, I'm not going to fuck around, but you can go and fuck like your 22 year old friend or whatever. No, not that and deals with it. No shot. Unless the guy is massively outranking the woman. I just I don't think I would ever believe it. Okay, and so so th this is where the weird stuff comes into play. Mm -hmm. When you get to that kind of level where you're making that kind of money, all right, so let's say like they're both making well above six figures and eating really well, whatever the fuck it is. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, because a lot of these ladies want to be with partners who you know make something comparable, have a life of status that they both can enjoy, they'll prioritize a lot of different things. And so they'll be okay with those arrangements. And I say this from personal experience, because I had a girl who would approach me on that tip and was really down for that. She's like, listen, my man wants to go around and do this thing, like I'm cool with it. So long as like, you know, we both making our cheddar, we're both growing this. So I don't Why would it not, why would this woman not constantly be worried about you stepping out and just leaving her for somebody else? Um, because a lot of people already have those arrangements where like this no, 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 hold on, not arrangements where you're Go open, ahead. but if you're a guy and you're yeah. with a woman and you're stepping on a con and you're the kind of guy who needs to be fucking other women constantly, why wouldn't mm. she be worried like, oh fuck, like you're just gonna step out and like leave me for like some 21 year old? Because they see, they understand that there's going to be a difference between like what the guys are willing to fuck out there and what they're willing to wife. Meaning like once, and so this is where they're thinking, those women don't mind if you go out and fuck other people. They just want to, they want to make sure you're not emotionally involving yourself. So these women will be fine if you go up and grab a side piece on the side and then just bang and smash. But if you start taking them out on dates, if you start taking them out on vacation so you guys can enjoy some beach time, then they're going to feel some different type of way because they're worried now about exactly what you're describing. And That's so they're this, fine. Yeah, I, got, I don't know. This sounds wild to me. I, I just, I couldn't imagine. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's different groups of people, but I can't, I couldn't imagine anyone being okay with that. Like. Oh, but, but, yeah, yeah. You have to imagine it happens every day already, and that they understand, it. especially at the higher echelons where people. Sure, I, I, the, in the like in because, the top like one of one percent, maybe yeah, where everything is like kind of weird or broken, right? But yeah, like because they don't anywhere, have too many options. Sure, but like for the options. for the ninety eighth percentile shit, like I, like I don't think that this is ever. Oh, happening. I've always said this doesn't mm -hmm. work for regular people. That's why I always mm -hmm. say like that's why I don't even like discussing. Sure. Because like, like for like for like, for like Andrew Tate or somebody, like I'm sure he can get away with it, or like yeah, yeah. Or like yeah, big streamers yeah. or YouTubers, maybe could get away with it. But like this is like, 100%. Well, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, that, and that's that's why the, I'm saying these are only rules for the people who are ultra rich. And that's why I was when I was talking with you and Sneeko, I'm like, why are we fixated on like what rich people are doing? Like, who cares? Because mm -hmm. most of this advice is not going to apply to our, our, our audiences. So I don't understand like the fixation on like who's a high value man, who is it? It's not most of you, so who cares? Sure. And, and that's why I don't understand these podcasts. Like, that's my biggest gripe with everything that they do is they keep selling this lifestyle that's only for the ultra rich and what their rules are and what their rules are. And they live like kings. That's fantastic. But you, you're not a king. Yeah. And you like less than one of one percent of your audience is ever going to get there. Yeah. So who fucking cares? I, I like people hit me up every day and it really rubs like rustles my jimmies because I'm like, bitch, you make like 50K a year. Who cares? Yeah. Shut up. Go, go work out, go make money, whatever. But don't talk to me about like, well, if I want to have, you don't make enough money to live that life. Don't talk about it. Don't talk to me about like, well, I want to uh, open up a, an account in the Cayman Islands. Bro, you make 30K a year. Why would you do yeah. that? Can you, you you my, can you help me with my tax? Like, what's my best tax avoidance strategy? Like, <laughs> motherfucker, you don't pay taxes. You don't that's, make enough money. You get it all back stupid. in April in your tax refunds, bro. What are you talking about? But yeah. nobody talks like that because they understand this is, isn't for their tax bracket. So that's why I get so confused when I see all the online discourse talking about this richness. And it, that's why I find the red pill stuff insidious mm -hmm. because I really believe that the audience members see themselves living the lifestyle that these guys describe. That's sure. what that was something for. that I pushed for and I was kind of happy that I got, well, I shouldn't say got into a mad because I don't think they're lying about it. But um, I mentioned that on the show. I was like, the stuff you guys are talking about, this is like some top 1% of 1% shit. Like most people aren't having like a harem of fucking women that are okay. They're like, yeah, yeah, of course. It's like, not, like most people can't do this. Like, okay, okay, sure. They say that, but everything that they advertise in the way that they talk, 
makes it sound like it's a cheaper movie, yeah. Right. I think that's just a dog. Like I think that's just something they say to like insulate themselves from criticism because they know they can't justify what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But I think that the way that they sell the lifestyle, well, even Sneaker, and this is why I kind of like Sneaker in a way indirectly, mm -hmm. because he doesn't have like um, the filters to be able to like maneuver the mainstream or people outside the community and maneuver the criticism efficiently. So he just says what he's thinking. So he's mm -hmm. like, well, listen, if you can't be rich, then f fuck you. <laughs> True. He's too honest. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he's too honest, which is, which is, that's where he's fucking up, right? Uh huh. The other guys can be a little bit more maneuverable, a little more savvy with it to be able to not be so flagrant with it. But I honestly believe that when they're saying this stuff, it's, it's you're supposed to be rich and you're supposed to live that lifestyle and you get to do what I get to do. So Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's uh, hard to know without like, and I said that before, and like, because I, I thought about like, should I watch a few videos and come in with like, like some clips basically ready to kind of like go hard and like, well, you said that or that. But I was trying to be a little bit more approachable. I don't want to do that. But um, yeah, because you don't have to. You don't have to find quotes. You well, because I was saying, because like, because when I, so for instance, one of my big criticisms of Red Pill shit is that a lot of it seems heavily materialistic. Um, and I brought that up to Myron. I was like, it seems like you guys are obsessed with just like cars and money. Um, but Myron's explanation of like, well, no, it's not just about cars and money. It's about improving yourself so that once you're improved, that stuff will kind of like come naturally. If that's the case, that's an okay message. That, I think that's fine. But I don't know if that's truly the message they sell because I don't watch enough of their content to know, you know? Here, here is what you have to pay attention. Mm -hmm. You don't pay attention to what they say. You pay attention to what they. Advertise. Wait, it's your thing cut out. Hold on. You don't pay attention to what you say. They say you pay attention you, to what. To what they advertise. Oh, and the sure. The reason yeah. why I say that is I think Fresh talked about like you know I bought my mom yeah, a home I and I can take story. care of it. Uh -huh. Beautiful. I think that's a wonderful thing to be able to take care of the people around you when you make your money. I talk about. I'm all for that. I support it. Take care of the people around you. I think that's awesome. However. If you look at their socials, if you talk about what they view as accomplishments when they're asked about it, generally they lead immediately to the to the fucking materialistic stuff. When I go on uh, when I went on Fresh's channel one time, everything was about him in the Lambo, him in the Bugatti. That's all they mm -hmm. ever fucking talk about. Yeah. So it's it's cute to say we're about this. What are you always advertising and what are you really being known for? Mm -hmm. And then what are you constantly projecting out there? So for sure. that's what I look at. That's what I look at. Because I feel like that's just something you put in the footnotes to be able to insert. Like, yeah, oh, it's, no, it's like I, a, it's a code. I had a it's chapter. A yeah. I had a chapter on the fact that women are equal to men, but I spent 12 other chapters talking about how women are inferior. I was yeah. like, well, there isn't a balance in your view. You're, you're, you're claiming that to have a rebuttal to the criticism, but it's mm -hmm. not actually true. Yeah. And and that's why I like Sneeko, because Sneeko would be like, no, that's tough. Yeah. That's tough. What's up? Oh, man? you didn't work hard enough? That's tough. And that's what it actually is. How you doing, Dan? What's up? I just uh, wanted to come in and say hi and see what's up. So, am I interrupting a very in-depth conversation? That's kind of what my, I'm best at, so. No, nope, we're just chilling. Who's Dan? I'm his sidekick. You've you never know, talked, wait, you like... guys have never talked before? I've never spoken to Dan. Oh, damn. What's up, man? Hey, man, huh? well, nice to meet you, Dan. I'm Abba. We both got three-letter names, so. Uh, yeah, well, so we're, I'm... you know. That's good. That's it. We got that going. Dan, I heard you said that you didn't believe these women were real until you. Well, so it's I like live... another world. <laughs> yeah. So I, I live uh, in Miami Beach. So I've, I've seen, um, you know, I, I've interacted with a lot of people like this. But I mean, I don't I feel this is so cruel to say. And I think you understand it. They must have really cherry picked to find these people <laughs> because some of them were exceptionally stupid exceptional we'll just say exceptional some of them were exceptional okay like, mm -hmm. like i feel fuck. like you would have to you would have to search high and low to find uh this quality is what i would say you know um I and then think... this is where i think my because i've talked with this about dan before and i think he says i'm exaggerating but like i feel like because me and melina she likes she goes to south beach all the time so when we go out to eat we usually drive down there for restaurants and stuff there's a restaurant called big pink that we go to all the time down there um <laughs> But it feels like when I'm looking around and I'm listening to the girls talking and I'm seeing like who's around, like that's like par, like that's basically what you expect to see. Yeah, yeah. I think as far as South Beach goes and all the people who congregate there, that's very common. I would also say these kinds of women dominate Instagram. They dominate social media. Um, are they uncommon? I think they're much more common among people than you'd imagine. Dan, you sound like you're probably mid thirties. Uh, yeah, we can say mid thirties. Yeah, that's about accurate. He's like mid late thirties, but mid thirties. Okay, okay, yeah, I was gonna give him thirty seven. I just didn't. Well, that's one year. I'm thirty eight. Okay, all right. Okay. I was just turned uh, thirty eight. New thirty eight. 
I guess that, you know, I'd still consider myself a millennial, but I've heard that some people would say that this is Wait, Generation X. No, you're a millennial. You're not a Gen Xer, Dan. Don't be uh, I don't know. There's some people, like about a third of the people who categorize those age ranges would have me at the tail end of Gen X. Weird. I'm coming at Red Bull. One sec. 1984. Yeah, I think the way it works is like the people on the trail end kind of overlap a little bit, so it's a little bit iffy for mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Like when I when I see people who are like at the trail end or like are just on the cusp between Gen Z and and my generation, mm -hmm. then those people I look, I feel like they're so drastically different. They might as well be a different generation. But I said uh, all this to say, go ahead. Sorry, you want to say something? No, I was listen. I want I've listened to a lot of what you say, and I'm a huge, massive believer in everything you've said. So um, I dropped out of high school and um, I joined the Coast Guard. And um, I became very successful in spite of that. And um, I think something that I, I appreciate is that my wife, I married her when I was broke, it, like, you know, fucking completely broke uh, in the Coast Guard. And um, we've stayed together almost 20 years. And I know that, you know, now that I'm, you know, like very well off and uh, everything else, I know that she's not with me for the money because she was with me when she had nothing and when I had nothing. And that's right. pretty good. And, you know, she's uh, she's a doctor and she does her own things. And I appreciate that. I would never want I can't imagine the feeling of of being married to someone that, you know, is only with you because like you have a fucking pound of gold on your neck, you know, right. and they're just they're just waiting for a piece to fall off. Like, it just seems like such a, a shit existence to every friend that you have, every relationship you have. They're literally only with you because of what car you drive or what fucking jewelry or clothing you have. Like, how shallow I'd rather be fucking broke as fuck and know that every friend I had is 100% real. They're with, with me for my personality or for what I do than that shit any day of the week. Like, who cares, honestly? Right. I think I understand everything that you're saying. Uh, I try to always kind of look at it from their perspective. You had the fortunate uh, opportunity to have that experience with someone right because it could have gone south maybe she might have left you because you were too broke for too long or whatever but in your case you had somebody who was solid and stuck through you and so you got to see the fruits of that experience right mm -hmm. and so now that you have you're like i wouldn't trade it for the world but for everyone who hasn't they don't understand it and so you have to understand your relationship with women is fundamentally different than people who all they've known from women is they didn't look at me when I had nothing. They never took an interest in me. I never got laid. Only the jocks did. Uh, now that I'm making a bit of money, I'm being successful. Now they want to come fuck around. But now I'm going to make up for all the times I got rejected because I oh I'm, I deserve that. And these women are only around me because I made it. So they have both a negative introduction to their relationship with women from their first experiences. And then also because that resentment exists, once they go through a metamorphosis where they're more established, more endearing to the opposite sex, they hold on to that resentment. Yeah, I can understand it. I mean, I imagine it's so hard to look at this objectively when you're poor, right? Because your only dream, I think, when you're poor and maybe you're not with women is like, I want to get money. I want to be the most famous person on earth. I want to be a fucking billionaire. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think, it's only until you've even gotten remotely some of the way there that you realize how fucking pointless it is to chase money for the, right. you know, just for the purpose of, of chasing money. Honestly, it's just soulless, stupid, um, you know, and you get no enjoyment out of it after a while, but you can't, I feel like you can't teach that. There's no way that you can, to the people that might watch that podcast, I feel like there's absolutely nothing I could ever say, or anyone could say to, to be like, Hey, listen, you don't actually want a Lamborghini. That's like the most shallow, stupidest thing you could do. What you actually want is a rental property in Durrell. Like, you know, that like I'm never going to get that across to them ever. Right. It'll never fucking happen. Exactly. And also their message sounds much more appealing and it's viscerally funner to listen to because I see them with women and I'm like, I want to fuck those women. So let me listen because I'm having a visceral reaction to what I'm seeing on screen. Whereas when you say like, you know kids and nephews and nieces like if you don't have children if you're not around children don't get that fucking warm fuzzy feeling that like parents do or uncles and aunts do then you're not going to understand and also it just doesn't sound as appealing so um i get what you're saying and i don't get mad about it. that's why i don't get mad at sneeko for like not understanding it so when i when i talked to sneeko and i was like yo you know when I spend time with my niece, it's one of my greatest experiences in life, and he couldn't get it. I understood why it was hard for him to get it. He just kept talking about, like, what about your balls, man? Like, you're letting your balls go, and what you talking about your niece? You guys talking about your, your wife? You want to buddy up on the couch and cuddle and shit? I'm like, is that really how you view deepening your bond 
with 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 your wife or your girlfriend it's like you guys cuddle and you watch a movie but that's his idea of what i was saying because mm -hmm. he just doesn't get it yeah you know? but he doesn't have the experience so like it makes sense right i you right. know i there's some of his earlier videos he seemed um smart and like with it and he was doing objective stuff that i think a lot of people would not do at the age he was doing it like you know they're what fucking 15 or 16 year olds are like doing political analysis of if Iran should defend itself against an attack from Israel or something like that. Like, shit and gay marriage yeah. and everything while playing Call of Duty. Yeah. 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 I don't think people did that. So honestly, I'm going to say something, you know, I've, I've met, I've met Sneeko and talked with him. I think he's smart enough to do a really smart grift and get away with it. And I, I actually, I think he might be doing that. I don't, I think, don't think he's doing no. it. No, I, I, I think, I think he could. I think just, that he went so far being original and like not really, I don't want to say not going anywhere, but like he's blown up. No, as a I think, of this, I think no? what has happened is legitimately the whole COVID era has like just destroyed people's minds. I shouldn't say destroyed people's minds, but like it's brought about so much doubt and so much stuff because of honest mistakes made by the government and officials and like all of the people in that arena that are like capitalizing on said mistakes. Like the, the COVID shit changed a lot of stuff societally, I think in terms of like trust in the government and like normal messaging. Yeah, and I suppose it, it's possible. I just, maybe I'm, when I say like, I think he's like grifting and doesn't believe it. That's like me being so fucking, he probably thinks it, it's like me being like uh, an asshole. That's actually like the biggest no, compliment I, mean, like, I could give him. We were hanging out with him personally. I had lunch with him yesterday. Like he's the same Austrian and Austrian. It's not like, it's not like when we turn shit off, he's like, yeah, man, like I love women. And like that blue pill stuff is so cool. And I hate that I have to do that. Like he seems pretty consistent through and through. Yeah, but that's just that's really selling it. That's if you part of the grip. He's like, no, uh, unironically, it's yes, like we're watching can. the Prestige. <laughs> I mean, what would happen if after, like, imagine it with a fucking John Zerka if after stream he was like, he, you know, come on, guys, I know the world is fucking round. I'm just capping. Like that would be fucking disastrous for. I know that John Zerka doesn't fucking think the world is fucking flat. I think he I might. know that for he doesn't. He might. I think you underestimate. You think I underestimate how stupid some of these people are? Not like, stupid, either stupid. But... I don't even think it's stupid. Here's, what is here's it? the thing. There, I can track exactly how Sneeko went from point A to point B. I, I, I know it because that's why they have a phenomenon called the red pill rage. It's literally something that a lot of dudes go through where they start to see changes in the world. They start to understand it a little better and they're angry because truth be told, a lot of the stuff that we're told is, is the right way to do stuff. It's isn't. bullshit. Yeah. Right. Right. So when I hear them talk about this stuff, I can understand why Sneeko feels the way that he does. I'm not mad at it. I've even felt some degree, some of it in regards to like relationships and dating. So um, all this to say, I don't think it's a grift one because I've seen him before. I've known him before and I've seen him now. And it like the progression makes sense. It's just so unfortunate because I think people like the way he was before so much and they are kind of just coping with the change that they saw. So they want to believe it's all an act, but it's just cope. People really feel the way that he does and people resonate. And I will say this, I don't think it's because of the he sees a success that he's doing all this stuff. I think it's a feedback loop. He starts to change. He notices a, a giant like um, response from people that's positive. He, like he's getting more money. People are tuning in way more. He's getting way more views. So he's convinced himself in his mind, oh, I must be saying the right things because I'm getting such a good outcome. Do it's called uh, audience capture. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah, there's a name for it because what happens is you start, once you hit into that feedback loop, it's like addicting. You're like, well, yeah, I'm definitely like telling truth. Like people are vibing with what I'm saying. Like, you know, it's making sense. And yeah, you kind of, yeah. even without trying to, you're not like consciously thinking, like, I'm just going to say shit to make my audience happy. But that's kind of sort of what almost ends up happening. But yeah. Yeah. And it's addictive too. Like mm -hmm. when people are messaging you, like, yo, you're the truth, man, you preaching. Oh man, never stop. And all these people are sending you money. It's like, how would you not start to believe that what you're saying is right? Especially at fucking 23, 24 years old. Yeah. I would not have had the mental faculties to be able to resist the temptation of like people's positive affirmation mm -hmm. in regards to how it would influence me going forward at that age. There's no way I would have. Yeah. So that's why I'm very sympathetic to like, his change in a way. And mm -hmm. people can say whatever they want. Like, there's a bunch of people who be like, well, at 23, I knew better. You think you knew better because you're not online living your entire life. Better. Yeah, that's like guys that are like, uh, well, if I was a celebrity, I'd never cheat on my wife. Motherfucker, for you to cheat is like a marathon. You got to do so much work to do it. These guys are getting women thrown at them constantly. You don't know what you would do in that position, right? Much the same that like, if you had a million people telling you like fucking God's gift to man, right? That you're online, everybody's gassing you up on everything you fucking say and believe. Like, yeah, you don't know how that would affect you. That can have insane effects on a person's development. If I would have started streaming at like fucking 
fucking 17 like some of these people do i <laughs> dude i would have been a much worse person growing up holy fuck to have all of those insane fucking thoughts reinforced while i'm at like the most egotistical stage of my life it would have been over for me bro if i would have had all this clout and this fame at the time when i was really out here in these streets mm -hmm. i'd have aids <laughs> sure I'd have every STD other than son. I would have had, or you know that whole Magic Johnson orgy parties? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah th that's what happens when you get fame and everything you want so early. You start having orgies and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. And you know what I mean? You get AIDS. Cause I mean, you're not gonna get all this fame and money so you could have safe sex. Are you crazy? I'm gonna get the baddest bitches. I'm gonna line them up. I'm gonna make them all stand beside the bed cause they all want my clown money. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of every single fantasy I want to do every hedonistic behavior I could do. And then anything that gets me that behavior, that gets me the AIDS that I wanted so badly, I'm going to do it again. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know much about AIDS today? My completely very unknowledgeable take on this is that I don't want to say it's been mostly solved, but I it's think been, that it's been mostly solved. Yeah. OK, so, yeah, that's what I that's what I thought is that there's essentially they don't, have, like, they, they, they don't have a cure, but they have such a strong treatment that basically it, it, it doesn't even show up in blood tests and mm -hmm. stuff. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. But your life expectancy with, AIDS, with HIV is the same as without now. Like it's insane. Yeah. The problem with AIDS is really truth. That's where it's an issue. It's re it's hold what? on. Your mic cuts out sometimes. Yeah. It's really what. Sorry. The the issue with AIDS is more so in poor countries. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because they don't have access to the same like antiretrovirals or whatever, and they get fucked. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So like, you know, you go to some places and like AIDS is like fucking up entire communities and mm -hmm. spreading because one, they don't practice safe sex oftentimes, and two, they don't have treatment for it. It's too expensive. The government's not going to invest in it. So that's where it's like really sad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, let me see here. Oh, one thing that I saw that someone said. Remember we were talking earlier about um, the kind of women that they're attracting because they're living that lifestyle? Mm -hmm. And then someone wrote this in their comments. They said, these guys don't care because they're just trying to smash her. Who cares what kind of women they attract? And I don't disagree with that. The problem is when you don't acknowledge the fact that like the way that you're drawing in the women is affecting the kind of selection you have and you start to complain about experiences or outcomes then i have it you know when you talk about oh this woman you know i try to fuck her and she she robbed me these women are just after your money it's like well yeah no you shit. constantly advertise the fact that you had gold chains all this cash likely you're going to attract a woman who's after your money because she knows that you have it i've never had a woman try to steal from me. Mm -hmm. i've never had a woman even like got ship gone missing around them i had to suspect but you do because of how you attract. I don't have an issue with how people want to attract women or how they want to fuck them. Just be cognizant that that affects you. And then afterwards, don't be out here making prescriptions to people based off of your poor selection biases. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. And so that's the main thing. Because even when I hear Sneeko talk about it, it's like, I'm so confused sometimes when he talks about women and like what they're like nowadays. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, have you seen your girlfriends? Your girlfriends are like nothing like that. So how is it that you're able to select women that are nothing like the women you're constantly decrying. And at the same time, you're saying every woman is like that. It's just crazy to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I think that pretty much covers all the 